So, welcome to our fortnightly storytelling session, friends. This is a session which uh, is without being a lecture, we get to learn something about life. And uh, we have got a two, part two of uh, the subject. Life le lessons, uh, stories that touch, linger and touch personal lives. Those kind of stories. And uh, what I'll do towards the end, uh, people who are interested can either put in the chat box or raise their reaction. So if anybody would like to tell a story, they can you always do it towards the end of the session. I welcome other storytellers to join. So these stories are, some of them are real. Real the sense it happened and I've seen it happening. Some are read and some are written by great storytellers. Okay. The first couple of stories which I'm going to share with you have been written by people who love writing stories with animals, birds, etc. as lead characters. Okay, this is the story of an eaglet. An eaglet, a baby eagle, one day lost its way. And uh, perhaps its mother missed it. And this eaglet fell down to the ground. It fell among a coop of chicken. And it was brought up by the chicken, the chick. Mother chick brought up this eaglet. Though it looked very different from the other chicken, sharp beak. It looked very different from the other, its other babies. But the chick brought it up properly, fed it and then uh, taught it how to go looking for food and all these things were done by this chicken. So this eaglet, baby eagle, grew up like the chicken, learning to say what, quack, quack, or something similar. Eat worms, grow <clears throat> like all chicken do. But this eaglet, when it used to look into the water, it found it was not like other chicken. It found there was something different. The beak was different. The crown was different. And then it seemed to have you know, some claws which were different. It looked very different. And then when it sought from its fellow chicken, adopted brothers, sisters, it is something different. They said, yes, it is different. What is different? To Pagala, you are mad. There is no other difference. You are among chicken. Live like a chicken. So it continued, quack, 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 eating worms. End of the day, afraid to go into the coop. Life. So one day what it did, it slowly, you know, went up to the top of a cliff and tried to jump from there. It found that the experience was exhilarating. But it had only learned to hop no? like a chicken. So it fell down to the ground. It tried several times. But no, it could not do it. It kept falling. It, got, got, it, it kept getting hurt. A lot of bachot khai. Then one day, one boy who was in that area, he again saw the eaglet. He said something different. So he took the eaglet to the top of the tree and threw it from there. So twice or three, three times it fluttered, fell down again. It didn't fly again. The boy used to try faithfully every day. It didn't fly. Finally, when the boy was wondering what to do. Another elderly farmer, he said, you are doing the wrong thing. 
take this bird to the top of the hill there, okay? Put it to the top of the hill. Take it to the top of the hill and throw it into the air. This fellow said, sir, this bird keeps falling from treetops. Won't it die? An old man said, Marne do, if that is the case. But take it to the hilltop and throw it from there. So this young boy went up. He was feeling, looking at you know, lion, very handsome looking bird. He was feeling bad because he was trying to teach it to fly. He was sure that the bird was going to die. He went to the treetop, I mean, sorry, hilltop, saw a few times. Felt a little bad, but finally he said, okay, if that's what the elderly teacher said, maybe it is true. He threw the bird. It fluttered, started falling, started falling, started falling, and then it found its balance. A difficulty, it found its balance. It kept trying. Its wings were, oh my God, going through a lot of pain. The wind speed against its head was very strong. It could not see properly. It could not open its eyes properly because the wind speed was strong. It fluttered, 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 fluttered. Went through a few hours of pain. Then something happened. It learned, you know, to move the tip of the feathers. When it moved the tip of the feathers, it realized that it doesn't have to flutter. It, has, it can float on the current. He said, hey, my God, it's a revelation. A little later, he was quinting like this, no? this eaglet. He discovered that instead of quinting, if he brought, brought his eyebrows forward like this into a hood, they formed like a windshield. Oh, he discovered one more ability. And when he looked down from there, he found that his vision was increasing so well that what he was looking for worms found better quality food down there. Flying, flying, flying. He, he found other eagles were navigating even better. Then he discovered slowly every day he learned how to come and perch on a cliff. Next day, how to flutter once or twice and then get into the current. Little by little, little by little, little by little, this eaglet learned and grew into a full-fledged eagle. And as it grew, it realized how to use the current. It learned another very important secret. That secret was during thunderstorms and cyclones, the eagle found that all other birds went and hid in trees and bushes and caves and crevices in the rocks. The eagle realized that if you float with the current, you go above the storm. And the vision from the stop on seeing the storm, is it fascinating? Only when you go there, you can realize. When you go above the storm and you realize the power that you have to clear the storm and go above. That is the story of the eaglet who fell among chicken, thought itself to be a clucking chicken, eating worms, struggling. Then one day somebody said, the best way is to give it a baptism by fire. Threaten one's life. And that day, the eagle discovered itself. Learn to float with the current. Learn to spot food. Learn to take shelter when necessary. More important, important, importantly, learn to weather the storm. Learn to fly above the storm. Does the story touch your life? Have we, in so many years of life, learned to fly alone? <laughs> Think. 
वी कैन फ्लाई अलोन डर लगता है इसका क्या होगा वट विल है The day we jump off the cliff, jump off the cliff. Don't literally jump off the cliff. The day you desire, you desire. The moment of reckoning, the day you bite the bullet, you discover more inner reserves in you. And when you reserve, discover inner reserves, you find here the two unknown potential. The bird thought the only way to fly was fluttering wings. The eagle discovered that I don't have to flutter. I have to flutter once or twice. Then I learn to maintain the balance. I learn how to hood my eyes against the incoming storm. More importantly, I learn to fly above the storm. <coughs> Senior citizens, of course, there are a lot of youngsters as well. Not all of you are senior. There are many of them. You will all eventually become senior citizens. Okay. All of you. There's one thing certain. All of you will end up on this side. That is the best part of you know uh, growing up. All of you will end up on our side. Then you will end up on our side of our generation. And then there's something called generation gap. Also, generation gap has to be there. No, my son has to be younger to me. I can't have a son with me same age. So you will have to end up on my side, on our side. Have we during the formative years? Have we, during the formative years, learned to fly? You know what are the best formative years? 35 to 50. Formative years. That's when you are at the peak of your intellectual and physical capacity. You are earning. Do we learn how to shield against incoming wind? Insulate and protect yourself. Do we learn how to balance on your wings. You don't have to flutter and struggle all the time. And at the appropriate time in life, have you learned how to weather and go above the storm? It is a fascinating view. That's what the eagle says. It's a fascinating view. The whole world sees it as a struggle. The eagle says, what struggle? You are fly about the storm. It is fun. That's the story. Note it down somewhere. Let's all learn to glow. Grow. We are, see, if you, there's a choice as we grow. Either you can age or you can grow. Let's take the deliberate choice of growing, not aging. If you're age, you become an old person, a boring person. If you grow, there is a question of aging. There is no aging. Age is a physical phenomenon. And we say age is a number. All these things can happen. So this is the story of the eagle that fell among chicken and learned to fly. Okay? Good. Thank you. Bharati has given me the applause. Thank you, Bharati. I'm going to take you to the next story. Again, it's about birds and eagles. Okay, for the next two, three stories will be about birds and eagles. And then I will come down. They say, you know, there are 84 lakh forms of creatures. So today let's do birds. 84 lakh includes, you know, uh, creatures underwater, crawling. Okay. It's unicelled, double celled, triple celled. We are the six, sixth sense people. We'll see all that. Okay. So there's a story of the eagle which learned and discovered itself. Okay. I discovered myself in the story. <clears throat> this is another story. This story is about a crow. Okay. Now this crow was uh, always a uh, fellow used to uh, always find it in the morning. Uh, complain, 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 like you and me. Scooter start nahi hota. I open the tap, water doesn't come. This is a Chennai phenomenon. You open the tap, water, hawa will come. You switch on the fan, water will fall from the ceiling. That's some city's phenomenon out there. Some place there is too much water, some place there is no less water. When you don't need water, there is a lot of water. When you need water, there is no water. So this is a phenomenon. So this is crow used to complain. What is the complaint? Eagle. Osprey, hawk, other crows, these small birds, 
all of them are chasing me. Right from the morning, they are making my life miserable. They are not letting me live in peace. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to eat my food. These people are chasing me around. It was fine complaining every day. One day it met her. Elderly owl. The owl doesn't seem to have any problem sitting there comfortably. Huge eyes watching the whole world. That's why they say wise owl. You know what's a collective noun for owls? They say parliament of owls. I think you are supposed to be in the parliament like that. No, watch, don't talk. Okay. <laughs> so they say parliament of owls. So this owl was watching. And uh, the crow finally decided, let's ask that from. I don't know why people say Ullu hai. Maybe he doesn't speak. Maybe that's why. So the crow decided to ask the owl, hey, these people are chasing me. What is the problem? I don't understand. The owl said, look, why are they chasing? Are they fond of you? Are they having some enmity with you? <clears throat> Do they dislike you? What is it that you have that these people chase you? The crow said, I'm sorry, you don't know. He said, look carefully. In your beak, you are carrying a piece of meat. Okay? They are after the meat. No one is after you. Please remember this. You know, really? He said, yes, drop the meat and see. The crow went and dropped the meat and came back. In a moment, the entire flock of birds went towards the meat and left the crow. So from the wise owl, the crow, crow learned a wonderful lesson. What's the lesson you and I can learn? Okay, philosophically, it says, we pursue artha kama. Artha kama means material. And when you are doing artha kama pursuit, then you are pursuing wealth and if you are pursuing a a happy, good life, you know, and you will suddenly find a whole lot of people around you. What are they after you for? Respecting you? Somebody will get you a bowl of, you go for a dinner, you know, a powerful position, you go, somebody will get you a bowl of soup, another fellow will get you a plate, another fellow will get you this, another fellow will get you this. Leave the position, then see what happens. You will have to find your own plate. So the crow learned a lesson. Drop the meat and see all this flock go there. The wise one will stay with you. The owl will stay with you. Artha kama drop. You don't have to pursue moksha. Moksha will come to you. In the same way, best of us, many of us. I, I, I'm okay. See, uh, once again, you know, I, I'm not preaching. <clears throat> they say in Bengali, you know, Gyan Deva. I'm not here, I'm Bhaktita. Bhaktita means I'm not trying to lecture, telling you, you be like this, you be. I'm just reflecting. I'm just reflecting. Like I'm a retired bank employee. <clears throat> I retired from a fairly senior position. I've seen my colleagues, many of my colleagues, senior colleagues, people who have just retired. Six, one year before retirement, you know what is their primary job? They will start drafting fresh resume. Draft a fresh resume, send it to other banks and send it to cooperative institutions, send it to this place, send it to that place, call your old boss who is a director somewhere, sir, can you get me a new job, sir? Can you get me a new thing, sir? Can you get me this new, sir? Can you get... Hey, how long will you struggle for a very? How long? I asked one of these fellows, a very senior man. He retired as a very senior position in my bank. I asked him, Are you many days? How long? He honestly admitted, you know. He said, Sir, from my 40th year to my 70th year, I have personally never paid my telephone bill. Organization pays. I have never paid internet bill. I have never paid electricity bill. Now, thinking of paying all that, I have to start looking for a new job. So you have been carrying pieces of meat and others are after that meat. 
and somebody is willing to die, he's already spent five years there. Why don't you pull it down? Why don't we put you there? Rat race, even after running the rat race, you're going to remain a rat. You won't become a cat. Which day am I going to decide? I don't need anything. The moment you say, I don't need anything, people who are after you for these small things leave. Quality ones come to you. There is a beautiful verse in a text called the Bhajagovinda. It's a very philosophical work by a saint called Adi Shankara. He writes there, Yavat Vitta Uparjana Sakta Tavan Nijaparivaro Ratta Paschad Jeevati Jajjara Dehe Bartham Kopina Prichati Gehe As long as you have Vitta Uparjana Sakta as long as you can earn money. Nija parivara rakta. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? Early morning, you will get good morning. Suprabhat. Suprabhat bhav. Suprabhat brother. After that, Jarjara dehe. Oh, what do you think? It's a philosophical reality. So, this story of the crow dropping its piece of meat is learned to emotionally distance ourselves from gadgets and all this. Please use them. Never ever give them all up. They are all useful. If it were not for this equipment, I wouldn't be able to do a, do a storytelling session. They are all useful. But I learned two things. I am the karta. All these instruments are karana instruments. I use them. They don't use them. My story learned from the crow <coughs> and the wise mouth. Let's learn something about communication. Communication, complete or incomplete or whatever from this story. This story is called the story of Gandharva Sen. So one day, the king was in the Sabha. Now he was sitting in the Sabha and he was asleep. He said, why is the minister late today? Why is the minister late today to Sabha? The minister came all flustered. He said, Mantri, what happened? Why are you late? And this person said, Maharaj, Gandharva Sen passed away. What? Gandharva Sen passed away. Sabha dismissed. I am going to my room. Please come and see me there. So the mantri and other officials, he said, declare three-day holiday. Stay to morning. Gandharva Sen passed away. So the Raja was in turn, he took off his crown. Very bad. Boy. And then um, the, the mantri also went home. Then the next set of people came and asked him, Sir, why are you so upset? He said, you don't know. Gandharva Sen passed away. He said, Gandharva Sen passed away. Oh my God, what a tragedy. The king has declared a holiday. Oh my God. So let's cancel this. Let's cancel this. So from the Raja's court, you know, his queen, the main queen, queen consort, she came and asked, Raja, why are you looking so upset? You have not even come for lunch today. He said, you don't know. Gandharva Sen passed away. Got so queen got so upset. She said, "Oh my God!" And she went back to her janana you know, quarters, and there she told all the maids, "Gandharva Sen passed. Gandharva Sen passed. Everybody was mourning. Are you Gandharva Sen passed? Are you Gandharva Sen passed?" The Raja had nothing to do in the afternoon, so he went to the harem, and then he asked the dancing girls to dance, but the dancing girls refused to dance. They said, "Sir Mahara, you don't know Gandharva Sen passed away." He said, who told you all this? He said, no, from the queen's chambers news came. Gandharva Sen passed away. And therefore, we are not celebrating. So the Raja, till that time, did not think. Only when somebody refused to dance, he started thinking. He said, who the hell is this Gandharva Sen? He has declared holiday without even checking. Hey, who is this Gandharva Sen? Then this lady said, I don't know, sir. The queen's maid told me. So they checked with the queen's maid. Who is Gandharva Sen? 
means means is i don't know that kotwal's may uh, wife told me. so they check with the kotwal's wife the kotwal's wife says i don't know mantri's uh, one of the maids in the house told me that then the news came. He said, no, no, Mantri, please go find out this Gandharva Sen, what happened? So they started asking, Gandharva Sen, Gandharva Sen, Gandharva Sen, Gandharva Sen, Gandharva Sen, Gandharva Sen, the whole city is mourning Gandharva Sen, passed. Who told, who told, who told, finally they found a Dhobi, Dhobi's wife, crying, you know, tearing her hair and crying. Ayo Gandharva Sen, how will I live without you? Ayo Gandharva Sen, how will I live without you? I said, is Gandharva Sen your husband? She said, no, no, no. He is the donkey which used to carry my clothes to the river every morning for washing. Now, without the Gandharva Sen, how am I going to wash clothes? So, Gandharva Sen was a donkey which got a state holiday and 21 guns a day. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about it. Don't blame me. But many of us or like the Raja who says Gandharva Sen passed away. And you know where is it seen the most? In this thing called WhatsApp. Forwards come left, right and center. Yesterday I got a forward. Senior citizen concession, airfare. And that concession is there for 25 years. And looking at that, somebody went to get that concession. See, ordinary, let's say Bombay to Chennai, Bangalore, discounted fare is, I think, 4,000. I don't know, I've not traveled for a long time. About 5,000 some. Discounted fare. By one, make my trip or something. Like that. So this fellow went to the airline company and said, I am eligible for uh, senior citizen, 50% concession. Yes, sir, you are eligible, sir. So what they did, they took the highest fare, 16,000 rupees. On that, they gave him 50%. Sir, 8,000 rupees you pay. pay. Otherwise, he would have got 5,200 rupees. He had to end up paying 8,000. Plus this surcharge, that surcharge. And when you land from Bombay to Bangalore and from Bangalore airport, you want to come to the house, another 1,340 rupees. So <laughs> this is the forward. Everybody and his uncle forward some message. It is like saying, you know, so and so happens, so happens, they, they happen. But this is how it happens. So, remember the story of Gandharva Sen. Every time you are tempted to forward a message. Okay. This is the story of Gandharva Sen. Right. Okay. Now let's go to the genre. Human beings. <laughs> Only a few days ago, we celebrated Women's Day. I don't know why we celebrate Women's Day. Our culture is different. The Vedic culture is different. We celebrate women moment after moment. That is the Vedic culture. Somewhere along the way it got lost. I don't know how. Just imagine Matra Puja, Ardhana Arishwara, all concepts of Vedic age. We don't celebrate Mother's Day. We don't have to separately celebrate Mother's Day. It is in our lives, integral part of our lives. So this story is about a mother. So in <coughs> Chhatrapati Shivaji, Raigad Fort, if people have seen Raigad, there are three parts of uh, the fort, of that fortress, is fortified by sound walls. The fourth side is a sheer dropping hill. So the security advisors of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj said, you don't have to build any wall there. You can leave it like that. You can leave it like that because who can climb down and climb? So military strategy, he said, okay, let's not do anything there. So that part was left unfortified. And these three parts were covered. And as a part of security, the main gate used to be opened at about 7 a.m. in the morning. And sunset, according to the Panchanga, if the sunset is 4.55, they will close at 4.55. If the sunset is 5.5, it will close at 5.5. They used to follow the Panchanga. Open at sunrise, close at sunset. Not 5 a.m., 5 p.m. Panchanga. 
So that was how the fort was being operated. And just outside the ramparts of the fort, there were villages. From those villages, people used to supply material into the fort. They can go inside at the sunrise and they have to leave the fort necessarily by sunset. If you don't leave by sunset, the gate will be closed. The Malwa will say you cannot leave the fort for the night. You have to stay inside the fort. You cannot leave the fort for the night. So people used to start leaving by 4.30. They leave it. Like taking the last train or last bus home. Otherwise you have to remain in the station. Bombay was like that even I think in Chhatrapati side. So <laughs> if you miss the last train, stay at the station. It was like that. So from the village, a lot of people used to go to supply. There was a milkmaid. Her name was Hirkani. Hirkani means small piece of diamond. Kani, small, hir. Small piece of diamond. Hirkani. She had an infant child, about eight or nine months old. She used to leave the child with the neighbor and then come down to the fort. She was a milkmaid. She used to supply milk and then come back. That was her daily chore, a routine. And people liked her because of her cheerful spirit. And she, was, she used to sing a lot and very popular too. Like our Jamila Mat, she's very popular. <laughs> so, so she sing and smile a lot. So she was very, very popular. One day what happened, her son was you know, very, very, very troublesome. The son was crying and not well. So she could not reach the fort before afternoon. She went inside in the afternoon. There were so many customers, you know, elderly people, young people, and she supplied milk to all of them. She forgot to note the panchanga time, kosher time. She took it yesterday's time, 5-5. Five, five. And came to the fort according to 5-5. Five, five, the Malva said 4.55, today closed. So, oh my God, she pleaded with him. I have a nine-month-old child. The neighbor will look after the child till 8 o'clock. Like many of you are sitting in ayahs. You know, they will leave whatever happens to the child. At some point of time, she will leave. The child is hungry. Remember, no electricity and in the hut. The child will cry itself to death. Let me go. The Malwa said, sorry, no way. She said, can I meet Chhatrapati Maharaj? Ask him. He says, if you go there also, there is a problem. After crossing all the security, you go there, it will be sunrise. So better leave tomorrow morning. So she was really, you know, horrified. She just didn't know what to do. Just imagine a mother missing a nine-month-old child. Some people ask what happened to the husband. Like many modern husbands, they are good at their computers and things like that, but they don't know which side of the nappy is the front side, which is the back side. If you ask them to give food, they won't, they will give uncooked food. Many husbands have been like that from those days. So she finally looked for a gap in the fourth rampart. She found all around the walls, not a single crack, even an ant could not go. Finally, she came to that sheer drop. She said, this is the only way out. She was afraid of darkness, like many of us are. She was afraid. And then mosquitoes in forests are big, you know. They are like bugs. Other beetles, bugs, crawling creatures. Hyenas. Anything can be. Hyenas are not there in hilly areas. Hyenas are there only in grounds. Other animals. Jackal maybe. The snakes. Poisonous snakes. Reptiles. All kinds of. She was first terrified. But she said, let me try. So inch by inch, inch by inch, inch by inch, always bitten by insects. She somehow came down, reached her hut. Next morning, sunrise, she's at the gate. The Malva couldn't believe. He said, we said, you cannot leave. How did you leave? So either you have bribed one of my guards, or you have found a chink in my fort somewhere. So let's go to the Senapati. The Senapati said all these security breaches are personally heard by Chhatrapati Shivaji. 
that's one of the reasons Chhatrapati Shivaji could never be conquered, you know. The Raja's security should be in the Raja's hands, not in some other fellow's hands. If it is in some other fellow's hands, anybody can come in through any gate. That has been India's history, unfortunately. Chhatrapati Shivaji unconquered. That's why he's still today known as Chhatrapati Shivaji. So, when uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji heard the story, is it unbelievable? He said, men folk cannot climb down this. How did she do it? He said, I will believe you, provided you take me to the place and show me how you did it. He said, if you are able to do it, I will give you one permanent security pass. You can come and go out anytime. She reached that place in the daytime. She looked at the whole place. She said, oh no, Maharaj, I don't think I can do it. Amara said, give me one proof that you did it. Then she showed her arms, all bruised, said, bitten by insects and moths and all swollen. Maharaj did salute her. He said, I know what made you do it. The love for your child made you do it. This is the story of Indian, not Indian mothers, mothers. Mothers in general. For the sake of the child, she weathered all storms, all threat. <clears throat> but when asked to prove herself, show me you can do it, she said, well, now my son is not in danger, so I don't have to prove a point. In her memory, in the Raigad fort, Chhatrapati Sivaji said, yes, that place is indeed vulnerable. Who knows, 10 mothers decide to attack us, we are finished. So he built a wall there. It is called Hirkani Burj. In your lifetime, please do pay a visit to Raigad and see this wall. And sign your name there, you know, I visited this fort. Because this is a saga of a mother who could sacrifice anything for our, her child. And that's the story of many of our mothers who sacrifice so much for us. This is the story of a mother, Hirkani, the great mother. We should remember. Yeah, good, nice story. This brings tears to mind. It's a wonderful story. Uh, let me share. <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, these are wonderful stories. This is the story of a young child. This is a story of a young child, a boy about eight years old. One day, almost late when the shops were about to close, he went to the druggist shop, chemist to druggist shops. He walked in and he asked that fellow, that fellow on the counter, he said, uncle, uncle, is miracle available in this shop? He said, what? Miracle, miracle. He said, kya baat? I have heard of elders coming Daru Pikyake miracle, but you are a young fellow. Why are you asking miracle? He said, I don't know. My mother was talking to the father, and she was saying that only a miracle can save our little girl. His daughter, his sister of about three years. He said, only a miracle can save. So I wanted to find out whether a miracle can save. At that point of time, an elderly gentleman entered. Properly attired. He stopped his Mercedes Benz car and got out and he got out of the car. And as he was asking for something there, he, he, he overheard this conversation. He said, uh, What has happened to your sister? And the boy said, I don't know. I don't know, but my mother keeps saying only a miracle can save the child. So he said, okay, Let's go to your house. So the senior person, elderly gentleman, took this boy to the hut where he lived in one of those bayside slums. And he called the father and asked, what happened? He said, she is suffering from a very, very uh, bad heart condition. And the doctor says, only a surgery can save. And the surgery costs so much money. It is a money, money which even three lifetimes I cannot make. 
I still have to pay 200 rupees loan to the sahukar for which I am still paying interest 20 rupees a month. And after paying that, I have nothing to eat. Where will I pay all this? Then he said, okay. He didn't say anything. He just called the boy. He said, you wanted to buy miracle? How much money you have? So this young boy, you know, from his pocket, he took out. From the seashore, he used to collect those beautiful shells. You know? So he said, this shell, this shell. So this man counted out 15 shells and gave back five shells. He said, we have enough money to do the operation. This elderly gentleman was a very leading heart surgeon. He made a call, got the child, treated, and in one month's time, a healthy little girl was playing in the beach, on the beach with her brother. All the slum people were talking, you know, Oh, this operation cost nine and a half lakh rupees. How did you spend? How did you spend? They couldn't find this doctor. Somebody asked the boy, hey, how did your father? He said, I know the secret. In that shop, I found an elderly uncle who took 15 shells and did a miracle for my sister. In our life, can we do miracles for somebody? And not for free. He took 15 shells. The boy feels proud that I paid for my sister's treatment. It is not that it was gifted. See, very often what we do, dhanam we give. Particularly, uh, again, please understand, it's not a reflection on anybody. It's not a reflection on anybody at all. It is just my thinking. If I'm wrong, forgive me. People working in our houses, you know? people working in our houses, maid servants, drivers, and things like that. You give scholarships to their children. Yeah, we do give sometimes. You know? We are personally given to a child. Suppose tomorrow the child goes up to be a leading surgeon, and you go and stand in front of the child. How will the child feel? Hey, this fellow has made me what I am. A leading position, you have made him feel small in his own eyes because of your charity. The charity has reduced his self-image. That's why it is said, what the right hand gives, the left hand should not know. What the left hand gives, the right hand should not know. Dhanam give. Shriyamde. Give it so happily. Let it flow out of you. Let not even your family know you are giving. But careful, don't give to everybody out of your pension funds and all you will have fun. Huh? Senior citizens, careful, okay? You give 5,000 to here, there your wife will ask, gaya? Kisko diya? So, <laughs> keep it fun. That's a humorous part of it. But, that is the The child grows up feeling that I have paid for it. I have paid for my education. This is the story of this wonderful doctor who cured the next story which I'm going to share with you is about a great industrialist which India produced. And even today, people would die to work for the company. So this lady was working in Pune. She and her husband. Her husband was a professor. I think Jamila knows the story. She was working in Pune. And then she found an advertisement in the paper. Wanted engineers. And in the last line it said, Male only, Allah wanted. She got so angry, she purchased an inland letter and wrote to the chairman of the company, you people are gender biased, the MCP, this, that, that, you have not called me, and you say only male are required, and she wrote the letter, and forgot about it. In 21 days, she got a letter from the company, can you come for interview? And then she went to attend the interview, you know who was sitting on the board? J. R. Tata was there. She couldn't believe her eyes. He said, I read your letter, which called me an MCP. She said, sir, I didn't mean it. No, no. He said, I just want you to understand our factory in Pune has only male employees. 
and now that you are joining, you will be the only lady employee. But I'm going to give you the employment and I want you to understand what are the difficulties. Anything you particularly want? You know, this lady, what should she ask her? She says, sir, can you bring me a women's toilet for it? Well, males are using, you know, I want a separate toilet for myself. This lady, you know who she was? Sudha Murthy. <laughs> then, she had an opportunity to go to Bombay. She was some meetings and things like that in Bombay. By the time she was married to our Infosys Murthy, she was married to him. And uh, she was, one day after a meeting, she was waiting for her husband to come and pick, it, pick her up. You know, the Tata office is in Ballard Estate. And towards the evening, and then no, nobody walks on the road. Everybody has run away to take their trains. And very dark kind of area. And she was waiting there, waiting for her husband to come and pick up. Suddenly she found, you know, somebody in white and white tiptoed, he knocked and said, he said, hey lady, what are you doing here? It was GRD Tata. She said, no, waiting for my husband. Then he said, hey, chai yaar. two cups of tea. He waited for her husband to come, who was as usual late. 6.30, he came at 7.20. Till 7.20, Tata waited with her, had chai, biscuit, talked about it. And then when the boy came, they, he spoke to Narayan Murthy for some time. And that was when he spoke about how he's planning to form in forces and things like that. And Sudha Murthy told him that, uh, sir, if you, know, if you don't mind, I have to share with you right now. I might leave because I may have to assist my husband in looking after the house and in looking after the company also. As an unpaid manager of the farm, she was working in Tata's. I know what did Tata say? He said, when your company is a success, please create a foundation for helping people. That was the motivation becoming for forming Infosys Foundation for Sudhamurthy. She still recalls that Tata didn't say, if you succeed, he said, when you succeed, a big, huge man who dreamt of India's steel industry and made it happen, who piloted the aircraft you know, from London, Indian Airlines, Air India, he was the one who piloted. What a personality. His, from his lineage comes Ratan Tata. And when the Tata, that hotel, Taj Hotel was bombed and they reconstructed, you know, they wanted to uh, pay people, you know, people, Golgappa, Wala, Pan, Wala, all of them were outside. So Tata ta asked them, why don't you do for these people also? He said, sir, they are not our employees. He said, so what? Are they not dependent upon you? When you are spending crores on rupees and brick and mortar, won't you spend on? Even today he owns an old Mercedes and lives in a bachelor, lives alone. So India has, this is the story of GRD. A great man. And you can see his effect in you should go to Jamshedpur and places like that and see the factories, the culture of Tata and the community called Parsis, their contribution to India. We still have time? Yeah, we have a couple of stories. So miracle I told you. Uh, hey, this is a story you must hear. The hero of the story is an ant. Okay. Would you believe hero of a story is cheating? <laughs> fun. When I read that story, I felt goosebumps. I read the story. It's, I read it somewhere. I think I read it in Reader's Digest or someplace. So once one, what happened? There was a group of you know people who, who do this trekking and you know, climbing up. They were doing trekking in Western Ghats. And they're doing good journey. Then one of the persons in the group found one of her contact lens missing. <coughs> one contact lens missing. Both are missing. So, but you know, she found it very difficult, especially darkness coming. And the group said, what to do? The group said, do you wait here? Some of us will go up and return by the evening. <coughs> Another group said, we will go down and try to fetch some help for it. 
Otherwise, you know, she was finding it very difficult without her contact lens. And uh, she and maybe her couple of companions were waiting. It was almost evening time. Then they found another batch, you know, of about 10 climbers coming up and rest. it was a resting spot. So they came and rested. <clears throat> the leader of the pack came to these two women and said, by any chance, have any one of you lost a contact lens? The Western Ghat Hills, someone found a contact lens. She said, I lost mine, but in this jungle, how did you find contact lens? That fellow said it was a great story. You wouldn't believe it. He said, what happened? He said, as we were making our way uphill, at one particular point, we all stopped to eat. And I was sitting on the ledge. I found a number of ants going there. One ant was carrying a contact lens. He said, I picked it up and I realized what a contact lens. Obviously, some trekker up has lost. Maybe it'd be useful. So he carefully put it in, you know, that nice little packet of his and brought it. And he says, at that point of time, both of them, you know, silently had a thought. He said, this contact lens cannot be used by the ant. Can a contact lens be used by an ant? What for? It weighs possibly 10 times its weight. But still it was carrying the contact lens. He said, suppose this attitude you and I brought into our life. The slight, it is it's especially, you know, people working. Suppose somebody told me, can you do this for me? The first thing I will say, no, no, this is not my work. Especially, you know, uh, no reflection in government employees. There will be one fellow who will write addresses. Another fellow will put gum. A third fellow will paste. You ask the gum putting fellow, why don't you paste it? Amara kaam nahi. Wo paste her kare. It used to happen in my bank. I once called a fellow. I said, why don't you clean the flag fan? He said, wo cleaner ka kaam. I said, aapka kya kaam? He said, cleaner niche matti phekega, usko jhadu karna mera kaam. So he will not clean the fence. So many of us are refused. You know, we, we protest against small work. This is not my work. This is not my work. Why should I do? This ant is something obviously it cannot use in this lifetime. Carried the lens around. Perhaps some divine thing works. Maybe somebody needs it. Maybe somebody needs. Maybe somebody helps. Perhaps somebody needs this lens. A small change in attitude makes my life and makes the other person's life beautiful. This is a story I learned from the ant and read the story from the ant. Agandhar was saying, I've told you, Kuru, I've told you. This is the last story which I'm going to share with you. A very lovely story. What happened? There was a trader. <clears throat> This trader went to you know, that, uh, that bazaar. He was a trader of camels. He loved camels. So obviously he must be an Arabian fellow. So he went to that place and uh, he saw a uh, camel. He talked to the camel seller, spoke to him, settled for a good price and brought the camel home. Yes, admiring the camel. The young assistant was told, clean up the camel, prepare a saddle for that and things like that. It was having an old saddle. So they remove all that and get a new saddle. So the camel was being watered, washed and things like that. The old saddle was removed. When the old saddle was removed, the young boy found a small pouch and faithfully brought it to the master. He said, Mariaka, look at this pouch. This fellow opened the pouch. 20 glittering, invaluable diamonds. So this man said, I must return this pouch to the camel self. <clears throat> this boy said, it has come to you as a gift. 
come to me as a gift. Why do you want to return? You said, no, I bought the camel, not the treasure. I must return. So finally, they went back to the market. By the time the trader had left, he came back only next morning. They waited overnight. The fellow came. He said, sir, I bought a camel from you yesterday. Under the saddle, this was there. The fellow said, oh my God, <clears throat> what a great person you are. You could have kept it for yourself. Then he said, from out of this, you please choose how many diamonds you want. I'll give it to you. So this trader said, smiled and said, sir, I have already taken two. Then the camel trader you know, immediately had heard it too. But all 20 are here. Yes, sir, but I have taken two, which nobody can give. You know what are they? One diamond is called honesty. The other diamond is called integrity. Honesty is what others, what I am when others see. Integrity is what I am when others do not see. So he said, I've taken these two diamonds and they will protect me all my life. Aapke bees ke bees diamond mubarak ho. Keep it. So in this world of artha kama, gems, can we choose these two things? Artha kama. I know it's not sitting on judgment. Of you. But can we grow? With every growing day, can we become a mature person? Can we become a more thoughtful person? Can I become better than what I was two hours ago? At four o'clock, I was somebody. Maybe at six o'clock, I'm a better person. Can we do that? So, folks, thank you for being with me. I thought I'll share these stories with you. There are many more such stories. Many more such stories. That's why I had part two. I'll not be doing part three. Uh, next, that is first week of April, we'll try to do a story on a different subject. We'll announce it. I'm not going to announce it now. I'll announce it nearing that date. Seniors today will help me announce it later. Okay. The floor is open for a few more minutes, maybe five minutes or so. Anybody who wants to share feedback, anything, you are welcome. Please share whatever you want to share. Stories, thoughts. Uh, Mohan? Yeah, yeah, Jamila. Very nice stories, you know. Nice to hear you. Thank I you. I sometimes forget, you know, it's Monday, like, you know, I forget, but suddenly I remembered it's a story session. Okay. Actually, I was not there. I came only yesterday. Okay. So, uh, nice to tell you. Very, very nice stories, sir. Mohan, now going to for that Lalita Ayers online skit uh, rehearsal. Oh. oh, very nice, very nice. Okay, bye to everybody. Bye, bye. bye. Nice. I'm seeing a lot of my friends from the storytelling groups and things like that. Thank you all for coming. Bye. Bye. Any of my friends are here. A lot of people are here. Thank you very much. Anybody would like to share thoughts? You're welcome. But also like people to participate in the storytelling session. So if anybody is interested in participating, you'll have to tell me a little in advance. So if you let me know a little in advance, I'll fit it into the theme. The organizers will fit it into the team and I can give you a clear slot for as long as you So It was uh, really a very, very interesting and uh, very nice uh, session. Many of your stories were thought-provoking and uh, it has given us a lot of learning. Thank you. Like, you know, see, sometimes we don't even give a thought towards it. But uh, while listening to you, we feel, okay, I should have done this, I should have done that. So very, very interesting and thought-provoking. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I, I'm Sharda because I'm not yes. getting my video. Okay, okay, yeah. People are welcome to share. Some of the people here have been, we are a part of a group called the Madras Tale Spinners. A few members are here. We are trying to form a group of uh, storytellers. Very many of them are capable storytellers. We try to create a small group. And we would like to run workshops for people who would like to tell stories. The only way you can change the world is by stories. No bhaktita, we say in Bengali. No lectures. Don't tell people, be like this, be poor. Be a good storyteller. 
the world always loves storytellers. So that's what we try to do. Thank you very much for being with me. Thank you, man. Wonderful Holi we had. And uh, the next month, April, I'm looking forward to telling you some very, very lovely stories, April on. Let's see what comes. Something will do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.